not really big on Mike Tomlin declaring starters in advance unless it's something that's crazy obvious like oh I don't know TJ Watt's gonna be my starter at left outside linebacker good morning to you good Monday morning I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports and this is Daily Shot of Steelers it comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball I also offer daily shots of penguins and pirates that I hope you'll also check out It's quarterback Monday here on Daily Shot, and that'll coincide nicely with Tomlin having spoken for the first time in a couple of months yesterday at the NFL annual meeting in Orlando, and with his having said the following about pronouncing Russell Wilson his starter and Justin Fields the backup. Um, rest assured when it's time to compete Justin will be given an opportunity to compete and, and we'll allow those guys to sort themselves out but I thought it was appropriate to describe it in the way that I described it in terms of how we get started Russell's in pole position I think his body of work um, you know justifies that and I, and just from my conversations with Justin I know he he is excited about um, working alongside Russell man and maybe learning some of those veteran tricks of the trade and things that he's picked up uh, from from being in this league for over a decade. Now, I'm not about to make a case for Fields to be the starter over Wilson either. Fields absolutely has work to do to overcome a lot of the issues that he had in Chicago, most prominently, of course, all of those turnovers. And I'll also acknowledge that I would not have a problem with Wilson being the starter over Fields, given his past, his pedigree, and quite honestly, his touchdown-to-interception ratio last season in Denver. He's in his mid-30s, but there are tangibles and intangibles that would strongly suggest that he'd still be a fine NFL starter. So, what's my problem here? My problem is this. What are you you doing declaring anything? Really? Really? If there's anything that you don't want to see, hear, or read from this particular head coach at this stage of his post-Ben Roethlisberger existence, it's that he's declaring stuff about quarterbacks. There would have been no harm to anyone at all if he had just said, listen, we have two NFL starting quarterbacks in our fold. And it's one of the things he did say yesterday, Omar Khan did a terrific job in going out and getting both of them. We're very happy to have them here. Let's just see how it plays out. How about that? Why does there always have to be some kind of imprint, seemingly? Why does there have to be some sort of stamp upon someone? Let me throw out a hypothetical at you here, okay? You go into OTAs. Now, there's always going to be a QB1 and a QB2 because you need to know who's taking which drills with which team. Doesn't matter all that much when you're talking about football in shorts. It really doesn't. You still would like to have your QB1 working with your top wide receivers, with your top tight ends, even with your top offensive linemen, but it's not that important. You're not operating under the rush. So, in that setting, why say anything at all? Why have a, a you know, a, a real hard and fast, here's my starting quarterback and here's my backup? Makes no sense. Because then what happens, you get to Latrobe, staying purely hypothetical here and not making any predictions. And let's just say, Fields just blows you away. Not only with the stuff that you already know that he can do. He might be the most explosive running quarterback in the world. And he's got the gun and he's got the moxie and everything else. So it's going to be easy for him to show well, right? Okay. But let's say he also shows, in whatever form that would occur, a propensity to take care of the football. That you see him making better, smarter decisions. He's throwing it away at times. He's tucking and running. He's making sure that the football goes in places where only, quote-unquote, our guys can catch them. And then he takes this trait, this specific trait, into preseason games. And yeah, I know you're not going to 
take any of that seriously because of what happened last year. But remember that in this case, if you're QB2, you're going to be playing quarter two, maybe quarter three. Who knows how that breaks down with only three of those exhibitions. And he continues showing this. Whereas, purely hypothetical, stay with me, Wilson looks like the polar opposite. What are you going to do? Now, instead of just saying, hey, we're going with fields, now you have to demote a nine-time Pro Bowl selection and Super Bowl champion who you built up for absolutely no reason and turn this into a him versus him thing and have people like me going around the locker room asking the players, what do you think of Russ losing his job and everything? And it's just... It doesn't make sense, and he keeps getting himself in trouble with this stuff. He really does. It did not begin with Kendrick Green. I only feel like it did because at the time, I was the only one talking about it, and I looked like I was nuts. What are you you trying to do here? You're making a big deal out of him wearing 53. It's just a number. What did you think they were going to do? Give him 52? That's Mike Webster's number. None of that. None of that resonated with seemingly anybody else at the time. I was completely on an island. And then it played out, because I've seen this from this head coach time and again. What I haven't seen, at least not in recent years, is what the plus is to it. The last time I saw him completely nail a situation like that, where he just anointed somebody, whatever, you have to go back to when Marquise Pouncey came in, to when Ryan Shazier came in. Not to when, you know, Kendrick Green shows up. Again, I'm not advocating for Fields over Wilson any more than I'm advocating the reverse. I would just like to see, and stop me if you've heard me use this line recently, the best quarterback win. I'd like to see the best quarterback, the one who gives the Steelers the greatest chance to succeed on a given Sunday, win. But you can't win, or lose for that matter, if there isn't even a competition. When we come back, J1Q. Luxembourg, Garbett, Kelly, and George. LGKG is a personal injury law firm in western Pennsylvania that represents people hurt in car accidents or who need help with workers' comp or medical malpractice. When the attorneys at LGKG make you a promise, they keep it. They've been keeping promises in our region for over 80 years. LGKG's been AV rated, the highest rating a law firm can receive, and they've been designated super lawyers. That's actually a thing for over 15 years. It's a rare combination. LGKG has offices in Cranberry, Newcastle, Beaver Falls, Butler, and Elwood City. Learn more about them by visiting lgkg.com or by calling 888 888- 842-5454 LGKG Today's J1Q continuing the Quarterback Monday theme comes from Brian who says DK you said in Friday's episode that Kenny Pickett is ultra competitive if that's the case why did he want to compete when he wasn't named QB1 Russell Wilson was drafted to be QB3 his first year in the league. And what did he do? He competed and took the job away from Matt Flynn and Tavarius Jackson. Brian, the line in which you're standing to criticize me for that one word in Friday's episode is longer than I'd like to admit. I really took it for that one. And you know what? I'll go right ahead and take it. It was not the best word choice. The description of competitive as it relates to Kenny, is something that came from this head coach over the past couple of years, was used all the time to describe his own intensity. It was not in any form something that was used to describe how much he'd be willing to compete for his job. It was all about his personality, about his makeup. And obviously, very obviously, I would think, No, he was not willing to compete for his job. And yes, that would be a massive strike against the concept of competitiveness. And now that I say that, I'd like to take this giant figurative book in front of me and slam it shut 
because I got to be honest with you. I know what I did last Friday's show on, meaning some of the ugliness that I've witnessed over the past couple of weeks and kicking Kenny on the way out the door. I did it for a reason. I also did it because the previous day, Thursday, I'd learned a lot of new information and I went ahead and did the show knowing, knowing it was going to be received the way that it was like, really, really, you're still talking about this. Well, guess what? I'm going to talk about whatever it is that I talk about, but I have no intention of making that a regular theme. I'm not one of those people that gets stuck in the past or hung up on hot takes topics. I'm just not. I had a reason for doing it. I did it. And that's that. As you can tell from the opening to today's show, I'm looking to talk about the current quarterbacks. And that includes on Quarterback Mondays here on our Daily Shots. I'll continue to share the misgivings that I have about Russell Wilson being signed. I'll continue to share the misgivings that I have about Justin Fields and his first couple of years in Chicago. I'll also share the genuine beliefs that I might pick up along the way about one or both. But what I don't want to do and what I won't do is just repeatedly revisit the same tired things about the same two, three guys that were just here. This is 2024. There's a whole new quarterback room. And remember, with still two more names to be added. And that's got a fun scenario unto itself. If only because you know and I know that the moment Wilson would struggle. Yeah, right? They know there's someone on the sideline who still has the sky for a ceiling. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody. Yes, everybody who listens to Daily Shot of Steelers. We're going to do another one of these tomorrow. 